Hello, my fellow boozy bookworms slash bookish friends and such. Today will we be we will be reviewing in five years by Rebecca Cyril. Um, I just really love this cover. It's shiny. To go along with this book, I have a bottle of Barefoot Pinot Grigio. It's mostly drinking. It is a bigger bottle than usual, but I have bigger problems than usual. So our main character is this woman named Danny, and she lives her life by numbers. And I can somewhat uh, appreciate this, but like when I mean she lives her life by numbers, I mean like before she even like gets out of bed, she counts to like a number and then everything is numbers the train number and the time is a number and i guess we all kind of live our lives by numbers but that is irrelevant and way too big for my brain to comprehend she is dating and living with this guy named david it's her boyfriend and she's like convinced he's gonna propose because go figure he gets the rainbow room which honestly just reminds me of Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. And I was really good at that track. Not gonna brag, but I'm bragging. He gets the rainbow room, he gets down, asks her to marry him. And she's like, oh my God, yes, finally. Cause they've been together for like a while. Danny has a five year plan naturally cause she's obsessed with numbers. She has a five year plan where she is going to get married, get her job and like live happily ever after in five years. That is her goal. That is her plan. But as we all know, life does not work out the way we plan it to, no matter how meticulously and how thoroughly we may plan. Danny and David go home. She's asleep. And all of a sudden, she wakes up in 2025. Meanwhile, this book takes place in 2020, hence in five years. And she is freaking out because she doesn't realize at first that she wakes up in 2025. She realizes she wakes up in a bed in a strange room with a strange man named Aaron. And then the TV's on and it's reporting for December of 2025. And she's like, oh my God. And she's freaking out and, but like not really freaking out, but like also freaking out. She like lets this man make her dinner. And she's like going along with it. She's like, wow, I have a different engagement ring on my finger. And wow, this is not my fiance. And wow, this is not my house. And she's just going with it. And like, maybe it's fair because maybe she thinks she's dreaming and in a dream you can't really control it. But like, she kind of knows she's not dreaming. And so all of it is like a little, like she's like a little too okay with it. Then she wakes up. And she is back with David. And he's like, hey, do you want your pad thai and chicken curry, hot or cold? I have an unpopular opinion when it comes to reheating or not reheating foods. If it was served hot, I want it hot. If it was served cold, I want it cold. Pizza should be hot. It was served to you hot, therefore it should be re-eaten, eat, whatever, it, hot. I don't believe in cold pizza. I will not put it in my mouth. I will not put cold Chinese food in my mouth. It was served to me hot, therefore it will be hot when it enters my mouth again. Eclairs or cream puffs, usually cold. I will not put one hot. If you microwave it, I won't eat that. That's not how it was given to me originally. I don't want it in a different form. So that was a rant that's not relevant to this book, so I'm sorry. Time goes on. Danny is still having her dreams, but her and David got engaged four and a half years ago at this point and they're still just engaged if you're engaged for like four years and it's not for money reasons or because you're holding out for the perfect venue or something which i think is dumb but that's just me then it's probably because you're not meant to be together but i'm not a relationship expert so also i now remember where the big thing is danny's friend bella her best friend bella is now dating Aaron and wouldn't you know it is the same the same Aaron that Danny dreamt about a while ago so she didn't just start dating him like you know in 2024 and change um she started dating him 
a little bit before. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really, I really don't remember. Danny is with David and Bella is with Aaron, but Bella is having these dreams that don't feel like dreams. And she's with Aaron in them. And so she's like a little like, but as you can imagine, it's a little weird because Danny's like, I feel like we're supposed to end up together, but we shouldn't because I'm with David and you're with my best friend, Bella. So, and the little icing on the cake is that Bella is pregnant with Aaron's child, but she's also sick, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, Bella thought she was pregnant, but it turns out she wasn't. She was having the symptoms of pregnancy, which kind of mirror cancer and more specifically, ovarian cancer. So Bella is dying. And here's the thing, Aaron and Bella are new, whereas Danny and David have been together for years. And so the fact that Aaron is like sticking with Bella is making Danny like a little weirded out because it's like, all right, you just found out she has cancer, like you can leave. There's no ties here, like you're not married, you're not a baby daddy, like you can go. And he's like, I can't, I love her. And Danny is like, you don't even know her. And he's like, it doesn't matter, I love her. I've never felt this way about anyone before. So like, it's real. And she, Danny's just like, mm-hmm, yeah, okay, mm-hmm, totally, mm -hmm. yeah. So then a lot of the rest of the book is just Danny taking care of Bella as she's dying. And then basically on like Bella's deathbed, she's like, don't you think it's weird that you've been engaged to David for almost five years? And Danny's like, I love him, that's why. And it's just not the right time and now you're sick. And Bella's like, mm, that's not the reason. Like, seriously, Danny? And Danny's like, eh. Danny breaks up with David randomly because she's like, she knows it's not right. Like, they're only still together and she only said yes because she thought she loved him. But she thought she loved him because he fit into her five year plan. And then Danny moves into Bella's apartment in like the spare room because like her best friend is dying. And naturally, since she broke up with David, there's nothing holding her there. Aaron's there. And then they're kissing while Bella is dying. Bella on her deathbed buys Danny the apartment that was in her dreams where her and Aaron were staying. And Bella's like, do you like it? And she's like, I love it, but you have no idea for what reason. And now I remember why this book made me cry because Bella on her deathbed's like, I just feel sorry for you because you've never had true love the way you're supposed to have it. And Bella's talking about her and Aaron and Danny just thinks back not to her and David, but she thinks back to her and Bella. She's like, no, like I have, I had the one true love and no, it wasn't sexual, but like the one true love of my life was you, Bella. And it's like, she dies, and then the whole thing comes first full minute for full circle. It's literally the same conversation that Danny and Aaron had in the beginning. It is like, what? Even though in like chapter five or six, it was entirely outlined. But now in chapter like 41, it's entirely, it's an entirely different story. The book ends with her and Aaron being on like friendship. He, Aaron got friend zone to put it nicely. Danny goes to her like therapy session or whatever it is to talk to a Dr. Shaw, AKA Mark. And he's like, you should call me Mark and maybe we should go out sometime. And she's like, yeah, I'd like that. Cover design is going to get a five. It's really pretty. I don't know if you can tell, you should be able to. It like is shimmery. It's just really pretty and it's simplistic and I like the lettering. It's just characters are gonna get a 3.75 because I like them for the most part. David 
isn't as developed as he could be. Aaron and Bella and Danny are good. They could be better. I think it's just like they're trying to focus on so much at one time that it just isn't coming through as like fully developed. Does that make sense? I don't know. It was a good book nonetheless. Plot is a four. I love this idea where it's like someone that is dreaming about their future but doesn't know they're dreaming about their future and then all of a sudden five years in the future it turns out that it's the future but it's their best friend's future and you're like <laughs> and then the best friend has cancer and you're like oh my god where is this going and so it's just it's really good overall ending is a three because I really got attached to Bella and I really liked her. I didn't want her to die. I wanted her to somehow like pull through and that is why Aaron and Danny couldn't be together. Because Aaron and Danny not being together just with Bella dead, like yeah, it makes sense. But also it's like, she would have wanted you both to be happy and if you're what makes each other happy, then you should be with each other. And very clearly they made each other happy, but it was like Bella was standing in the way. But I'm also really kind of okay with Danny ending up with her doctor, her psychologist, because I really kind of like that avenue as well, because I feel like they relate to each other. And so I'm here for that as well. So I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. I don't even remember what I said in the past. 15 seconds so book drop is going to get a 2.75 and that might sound harsh but the book drop is for sure when you find out that Bella has cancer and that's like very early on and that's not why it's getting a 2.75 we not really saw it coming but like we knew it wasn't gonna end right or correctly or how we wanted it to so we knew something was going to happen we didn't maybe know it was that and I, I don't really know what I'm saying, but when I was sober, I said it was 2.75. I'm not sober anymore, so I don't know. Maybe in five years I'll be sober. <laughs> Which gives In Five Years by Rebecca Serrell a 3.7 out of 5. Honestly, I gave it a 3 out on, on Goodreads, so pretty good. It was a good book. It just didn't, like, wow me the way I thought it was going to wow me and it didn't shock me. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned until next Friday, and as always, stay boozy, my friends. Bye.